Hey everybody, Punisher88 here once again. Welcome back to part two of a weekend review spectacular, whatever the heck you want to call it. So, in part one, we went over cowl number four. Part two, we're going over cowl number five. So, let's get to it. So, after the riot at the Cowell picket line, uh, Jeffrey Warner's feud with Mayor Daly really takes a grim turn in this issue. Um, the strike falls apart as supporting unions uh, flee Warner's sinking ship. And uh, with no one else in the chief's corner, let's just say desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, this issue will likely be a real uh, polarizing one for readers of this real compelling uh, reimagining of Cape Cape Book Fair, as uh, these heroes are forced to cross lines that no amount of genre convention can sweep under the rug. Uh, writers uh, Kyle Higgins and Alex Siegel uh, promise to take this series in an intriguing new direction, and while some of the twists were kind of foreseeable, they've certainly lived up to their word. <laughs> um, as the fallout of the riot at City Hall really starts to spread through Chicago, um, Warner is working every angle he can to really maintain power in his uh, political play against Mayor Daley, and uh, with the police, teachers, and other labor unions starting to pull their support, it kind of really just leaves Warner alone in the fight. And meanwhile, Pierce uh, reaches out to uh, Hayden, who is Arclight, uh, taped to the face of Cowell in an effect, uh, effort sorry, to win back uh, public favor. Uh, Pierce plans to turn all his findings on the, the weapons leak uh, to the CPD, the weapons leak that I kind of mentioned on before in issue number four. And it's really mentioned in, I believe, issue number three. And um, so, yeah, so he plans to leak all that to the CPD and uh, really bring Warner, he wants to bring Warner down. And Hayden finds himself caught between the opposing plans of the chief, Warner, and the detective. Pierce. So you really see, you know, it kind of leaves you wondering what side is he going to choose and whatnot. So one of the strengths of this issue and series in general is the complexity of the characters. Uh, in only five issues, we haven't had much time with the cast, uh, but Higgins and Siegel have uh, really managed to make a really interesting antagonist of uh, Warner and uh, despite his corruption he seems to to operate from a world weary sense of good and evil uh, one that is kinda maintained by uh, the power systems at work around him you know, he kinda feeds off all that and uh, this makes for an amazing confrontation between Warner and Hayden as Warner really reaches out to Hayden's sense of duty, however diluted it may be by excess and self-preservation, Hayden's motivations are unfortunately a bit hazy at this point, which raises some big questions as the issue draws to a close. Uh, in the end, however, just as Pierce is about to you know, break the entire scandal, Hayden's allegiances to Warner win in the end, and he ends up murdering Pierce in the alleyway and takes the evidence file, closing the door on Pierce's case, but opening another as the consequences of Pierce's death loom. Uh, in the closing pages, Warner meets with uh, Camden Stone, and he proposes a deal with the mob to put costume aggressors back on the streets uh, of, of Chicago and with villains to fight the heroes 
uh, uh, sorry, with villains to fight, uh, the heroes must return, and Cowell will live on. So, all in all, out of all of this, uh, Warner pretty much wants to try anything to keep Cowell alive. That's like his baby, pretty much. And um, the cycle of good and evil will sustain itself once more, just as Warner needs it to. And um, while the, the scripting from Higgins and Siegel is excellent, I find artist Rod Reese uh, brings the, the real you know gritty world of Cowell uh, to the page with real impeccable line work and really smart design decisions. Uh, a lot of moody color palettes and soft gestural painting really add some real feel to these different sequences um, which are which is a thing that I really like um, they're all color coded as the story progresses um, different colors used for each different scene I find makes for a, a very diverse reading experience memorable from first page to the last so uh, yeah, really something else. So uh, that brings me to the end of part two. Way shorter than part one, I know. I apologize. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, if you like this and part one, make sure to give them a thumbs up. If you didn't, give them a thumbs down. If you do give them a thumbs down, it just means I gotta work harder on pleasing you guys. Uh, also, if you enjoy these these kind of reviews, take a look around my channel. I got plenty of them to keep you occupied. Uh, also, if you're into uh, unboxings, I'm a member of Loot Crate, so every month, as one of my promises to my viewers slash subscribers, I do a, a Loot Crate unboxing every month, and the uh, April one should be coming up very soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, if you're into like backstory kind of stuff, little I call them mini history lessons on lame uh, comic book characters. Well, every Wednesday I do just that. I give you their backstory, first appearance, books they appeared in, creator, so on and so forth. So if you like the sound of all that, great. Go check. It check everything out. Uh, feel free to leave a comment on any video you watch. Uh, I, I enjoy reading uh, the comments because I find it really keeps the interaction between myself and you, the viewer, really strong. And before leaving, make sure to click that subscribe button. So, uh, with all that being said, I actually thought of a question for you guys this week. Uh, with, with all the hype and whatnot with the release of the new Star Wars trailer and the new Batman v Superman and all this stuff. Uh, out of all the new trailers that have been being released or leaked, um, I'd like to know your opinion on you know which one you're most excited about. If if I had to pick right now, believe it or not, I'd probably have to go with the Star Wars one over Batman v Superman. As much as I'm really psyched to see that, uh, I don't know. Star Wars is just looking really good right now. And yes, I am excited for Age of Ultron as well. I will be watching it next weekend, so. Oh yeah. <laughs> and also, that reminds me, uh, next weekend is free comic book day. So uh, I will put a link in the description on this video to the free comic book day website so you guys can go check it out. You can see what stores are doing what in your area. Uh, you can see what books are available and whatnot. There's a lot of good ones this year. So yeah, make sure to check that out. And then I'll also put all my social media, mumbo jumbo, uh, Twitter, and Facebook and all that. So anyway, uh, I don't want to ramble too much longer here. So um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And... I'll see you guys on Wednesday. All right, guys. So that's it for now. So this is Punisher88 signing off. See ya.